All right, today I'm going to be going over the Yamaha Grizzly 350 four-wheeler. This is a two-wheel drive. It's an automatic. I'll show you that gear position uh, selector on the other side there. But I want to go over a couple things with you, a couple things we do and don't like about this machine, some common problems. What I actually have this four-wheeler in here for is a customer who brought it to me as just a complete basket case. He doesn't know what's wrong with it. He brought it to me and wants me to get it going. I'll probably take and resell it. So what I have here is a back end that was off. The differential looked like it was uh, completely disassembled at one point, but it was thrown back together. And I got it with the rear end off. I put a couple of the pivot bolts back in, the shock bolts, uh, just so I could shoot a couple videos with it complete. And I wanna show you guys a couple different of the problems, problem areas that we see here. And then as well as do a service video. We'll also go through and clean the carburetor on it. I'll show you how to remove that carburetor We've got wheel bearings that we need to replace, uh, air filters, spark plugs, stuff like that. We need to change oil in it, replace oil filter, and I want to go through all that stuff with you guys. So make sure you check my channel for those other videos. I do appreciate you guys watching. If you guys find these videos helpful, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Comment below. Let us know what you'd like us to uh, put a post a video on, and uh, we can try to get that done for you guys. Also. Uh, we will have this four-wheeler in our shop for quite some time, so if you guys have questions or comments on this four-wheeler, make sure and leave those below. I can try to shoot some more videos of what you guys want on this four-wheeler. So that being said, I'm going to go through. I'm going to start on the right-hand side here, and I'll just probably work my way around the front of the four-wheeler, go around to the left-hand side, and then go to the back of it, go over everything there, and then I'll go up to the controls, let you know, and show you some of those features there. So... All right, on the right-hand side here, starting uh, right by our right foot. So this would be, as you're sitting on the four-wheeler, we'd consider this the right-hand side. That's typically whenever you're buying parts or talking to uh, parts guys or whatever, you always consider the right-hand side when you're sitting on the four-wheeler. So right-hand side here, we've got your clutch cover. I'm gonna be doing a separate video on how to remove those clutches, how to replace those belts, how to replace those uh, those bushings there. I wanna show you in detail that clutch assembly there. Also on the right-hand side, we've got a rear brake lever. This lever you can push down. The master cylinder and the control is up front here in front of this panel. It's protected from any dirt and debris that will get kicked up by this front tire here, but that's your lever. And then any kind of adjustments will be on the back, and I'll show you that when we go around to that side. Spark plug on the right-hand side of your cylinder head here. Your exhaust flows right through this cover here. You will get a little toasty. Your right knee will get a little toasty from this exhaust header here, so keep that in mind. We've got an Allen bolt here. I'm going to go over how to remove that carburetor again on a separate video, but I want to show you where that bolt is there. That will have to be removed. On the right-hand side here, we have a shock, and then on the left-hand side, we have a shock. These shocks are uh, adjustable. You can adjust each side uh, differently. There is one, two, three, four, five different settings on this shock. Depending on the load that you're carrying, depending on what kind of riding conditions you're in, you can adjust those accordingly. You do want both of those shocks to be adjusted evenly so that one side isn't taking the brunt of the weight. I've done several other videos of adjusting these shocks. Make sure and check those out. It requires a special tool. I've showed you how to do it without that special tool in a separate video. This has got an oil cooler, so it doesn't have a radiator. It's not considered liquid cooled because it does not have coolant. It does have a oil cooler here. You've got a oil cooler fan in behind this oil cooler, so you want to make sure that that's working properly. Uh, take and spin that with your finger. That'll tell you if it's locked up or not. Uh, there's other tests that you can do to make sure that that fan motor is working properly. You've got your tie rods here and underneath of your upper A-arm. This is the upper right-hand A-arm. You do have a lower right-hand A-arm here. This is your tie rod. You can adjust those, loosen up that lock nut there, and there's going to be a lock nut on the other side as well. Loosen both of those up, and then you can take, a, I believe, a 10-millimeter wrench, put it on this flat spot here, turn this tie rod. I've done countless other videos on how to adjust those tie rods evenly, and so you can get your four-wheeler driving straight. Around the front here, you've got lights that you can turn on at the handlebars here. Those are where those lights are. There's a, a right hand and a left hand uh, light there. 
You want to make sure that those bulbs are good. The way that you change those would just be come in uh, from the, the back side here. There's a rubber cap here. You can take, do about a quarter turn or a third of a turn and unscrew those light bulbs and those will pop right out. So fairly easy to do. You want to make sure those are working before you go out night riding on some trails. This, because it is two-wheel drive, does not have a front differential. You can see there where your front differential would be if you did have a four-wheel drive model. It even has the brackets that that differential would attach to. You've got a steel bumper here. That's going to be separate from your luggage rack carrier, which is up here. You want to be careful how much weight you put on these luggage carriers. There is a maximum capacity. You want to make sure you... Uh, look at that before you go and stack a bunch of weight on here. You can potentially bend up this front bumper if you put too much weight on there and obviously the front rack there. And you can see they put a little bit too much weight on that front end there. So be careful of that. Uh, again, you've got your left hand shock here, adjustable same way that you do your right side. And then moving over to your left hand side of your four wheeler, this is your footwell here. So right and left footwell, this is called your left footwell. This black piece here, you've got a foot peg. You've got your pull start here. This is the left hand recoil pull starter. So you can take and pull that, not as opposed to the right hand. It's just one recoil pull starter for each four wheeler. This happens to be on the left hand. So if you are trying to get this four wheeler started, if the battery is dead or low, you can take reach down with your left hand, more than likely it'll take both hands, and uh, it, I'm gonna warn you, may just jerk that arm right off of there, so be really careful pull starting that, make sure you've got a good grip on there. Directly behind your recoil pull starter is your oil dipstick, your oil fill cap, and I'm gonna go over that in a separate video, I wanted to just point that out quick. You've got your shift lever arm here, so this is kind of a tie rod for your shift lever. You can adjust that the same way that you adjusted your tie rods up here. You've got your shift knob here, your shift lever. Like I said, you've got a forward, reverse, and neutral, and uh, it gives you that pattern here on the actual shift knob. You do have to push in the brakes uh, to get it into reverse or you can pull in your hand brakes on the left hand side here. So if this say is not going completely into neutral or not going completely into reverse, you may have to adjust this rod here. Keep that in mind. Carburetor is here. You've got an idle adjust here. I'm gonna go through and uh, do a carb clean and a carb removal on this carburetor. So keep your eye out for that video coming soon. You have got a fuel knob here on position here. Reserve is up and on is the down position. This knob was taken off for some odd reason, so I can't show you what that knob looks like, but you take two fingers there and you can turn it fairly easily. So on the left-hand side here, you've got your rear tire. Kind of in front of that rear tire is gonna be your regular rectifier. That's a common problem, especially on a Yamaha. I don't know why they've got uh, more issues with their regular rectifiers than anybody else, but if you have a a battery that continues to be dead, you may want to take a look at this regulator rectifier and get that replaced. I've done separate videos on how to uh, compare a good regulator rectifier with a bad regulator rectifier. I also have done videos on comparing the knockoff Chinese unbranded regulator rectifiers with an OEM or a good high quality aftermarket regulator rectifier. Just be very careful what regulator rectifier you put on your four-wheeler as that is controlling how much power goes to your battery, how much power is coming out of that stator and going to your electronics. You want to make sure that that is in very good condition. Make sure you've got a good high quality regulator rectifier before you just throw some $15 piece of junk on your four-wheeler. You, you don't want to destroy your CDI box or your battery just because you wanted to save a couple extra bucks on a regulator rectifier. Check that video out. The same way that your front shocks were adjustable, your rear shock is adjustable. You've got one shock in the rear. It's going to be right in the center here, and you've got about four or five different settings there as well. Uh, typically, if you're going to put a lot of weight on there, you want to tighten up that shock. That way, uh, you've got a little bit smoother ride. That boiler will sit up and hold cut. On the rear You've got a place to mount a ball, so you can pull a trailer there. There is some capacities here, some pulling capacities and load capacities that is supposed to be a tag on your rear axle carrier. That's here, pulling load. So keep those numbers in mind there so you don't uh, overdo your four-wheeler. We've got your rear brake system here. This is a drum brake assembly here. You've got your 
cable that comes from your foot brake. So I showed you where that foot brake was on the, on the right hand side of your four wheeler. This second cable here goes all the way up to your left hand handlebar controls. And uh, to adjust those brakes, you can adjust them here. Turn this butterfly in if you wanna tighten these up. Turn it out if you wanna loosen it up. If by chance your four wheeler is stuck, it's not moving, say it sat for a long time, or say uh, it, you got in a small accident, something got bent up back here, you wanna check to make sure these are adjusted uh, properly. You also wanna make sure that these aren't sticking. Sometimes if it gets hit from the rear, or say uh, you've got water in this housing here and it freezes up, a lot of times this will be seized up. You won't be able to move that like I am there and you will have a rear axle that is stuck. Now, I told you at the beginning of this video uh, that we got this four-wheeler in and the rear end was off of it. You can see here these bolts were pulled. I'm gonna guess that they had some sort of a drivetrain issue here with uh, the rear differential. Maybe it's locked up in there. Maybe they got water, maybe bearings are shot. Uh, but the swing arm was completely pulled off and this differential was uh, completely loosened up. So I'm going to dig into that. I want to show you guys what that looks like inside of there. But I wanted to get this overview video done for you so you have an idea what you're looking at when you uh, own a Yamaha Grizzly 350. So exhaust pipe here, you've got a replaceable tailpipe here, three Allen bolts. Pull that out, you can replace that if it is damaged. It's not uncommon for these things to get damaged. If, uh, again, if somebody runs into the back of you, you back into a tree or something, this should protect it, but if for some reason it doesn't, you can smash this end piece in. You can just replace that separately than replacing the entire exhaust. So kind of a nice feature on these Yamaha exhaust systems because they are not cheap if you buy an OEM exhaust pipe. There's lots of aftermarket companies that make good aftermarket mufflers, so make sure you check those out uh, if you're wanting to get that replaced. Going up to your seat here and then your controls, I wanna show you what that looks like underneath that seat. I'm gonna also show you what those handlebars do and what those controls do up there as well. All right, up on the seat area here on the back, you've got a latch. Go ahead and pull that latch up and then lift your seat up. It's got to slide out of a couple different places there, so kind of pull back and up as you go, and then you can flip your seat over. Typically, you've got a manual that sits in here. Uh, these are two of the posts that hold your seat in place, and then you've got these tabs up front here that will slide underneath here, here, and then those uh, two holes or those two posts that are here will go into these spots there. So that's why you kind of got to pull it up, jerk it up, and uh, go ahead and lift that up to pull that seat off of there. Normally you've got a tool kit that sits underneath there, held on by a rubber strap. Make sure and check that out. Uh, if you're going out riding, make sure that's there if you need it. Also a storage box here, throw all your junk in there. Make sure you never clean that out. That's the best thing you can do. Also, we've got your CDI box here. You've got a handful of different relays. I believe you got three relays. Uh, and then you've got your fuse box that's here. You've got lights, you've got ignition, you've got, uh, you know, I don't know what else. There are four different fuses in there. Make sure and uh, make sure you've got a spare there in case you're going out riding. You've got your starter relay here. And when you hit your start button on the handlebars there, that runs power from your uh, battery here, runs it through your starter relay, connects those points there, and then we'll turn over your starter. So if your four-wheeler is not starting, if your battery is for sure charged up and you've got good cold cranking amps, uh, then I suggest uh, fiddling with that starter relay to see if you've got an issue there. Going on to the dash here, you've got your fuel tank cap here. Normally you'd have a hose that runs here and a lot of times that is uh, just shoved down into a little hole that's right beside your key there. You want to make sure you've got uh, a vent on there because if you don't, your four-wheeler sits out in the rain or you're riding through water, you could get water in your fuel tank through that hole there. So that's why we like to keep a hose on there. That hose typically goes down there by your ignition switch. You got your key here. Normally from the factory, you've got two keys. Both of them should work. One of them, most of the time, one of them has a grommet. One of them does not. Uh, just a little bit cleaner look with that black grommet on there. Uh, you've got one position just on and off for your key switch, nothing else. On the left-hand side here, you've got your lights, you've got off, you've got low beam and high beam using the same set of headlights down there. Uh, it's a dual filament bulb, uh, and um, that's how you control your lights. You've got your emergency shutoff there. That'll kill power to your four-wheeler. Uh, you want to make sure if your four-wheeler's not starting, I like to make sure this is in the on position. A lot of customers will bring me their four-wheeler. It won't be starting. 
too many times, it's because this was flipped off by somebody else. They didn't realize it. They're sitting there trying to start their four-wheeler. It won't start because of this switch here. You've got your choke knob here. To choke your four-wheeler, pull it all the way to the left. To turn your choke off then, push it all the way to the right. So that would be to the center of your four-wheeler there. And when we're cleaning that carburetor, I'll show you how that choke plunger functions down on the car, but that is your, your choke control there. You've got your rear brake here on the left-hand side. Again, that's that cable that runs all the way down to your rear brake assembly. You've got a parking brake here, so pull this in, push this tab down, That'll then you can let go your lever. It'll hold that uh, four-wheeler in position there. When you're ready to remove your park brake, pull this lever in. This is spring-loaded, should kick up and uh, release that brake uh, assembly there. On the right-hand side, you've got your throttle lever, the most important part of this four-wheeler. This is a thumb throttle. You've got some adjustment underneath of this rubber boot here. You can adjust this thumb throttle so that if younger kids are riding it or somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, you can take and turn this screw in. You've got a lock nut there. Take and screw this in. That'll keep this thumb throttle from being pushed all the way in. So you can turn it all the way in, then your thumb throttle moves like that much. Obviously, pull that screw all the way out. You're going to be able to push that throttle all the way in. So if you want to control how fast your rider is going, screw that in. Make sure once you do that, you tighten this lock nut back up. Otherwise, that screw could fall out. You can order replacement screws on here. If, say, you buy a used one and didn't come with that screw, you can go ahead and replace that. We've got hydraulic master front cylinder here. This is your reservoir. Takes a dot four brake fluid on this master cylinder. Undo these two screws here. If you need to bleed those brakes, make sure you do that. But you want to make sure that this level is good. You can see your level through that window there on your master cylinder. So this just controls your front brakes. You've got disc brakes in the front, which is, I feel like, a way more efficient style of brakes on a four-wheeler. So you've got hydraulic front brakes, and you've got uh, manual drum brakes on the rear. On the dash of your four-wheeler, this is a pretty simple, pretty plain four-wheeler, so you don't have any kind of a speedometer, although typically uh, you would have that right here if you did. You've got your neutral light there, your reverse light, you've got your oil temperature light there. So keep an eye on those. Uh, you will see when you adjust your shift lever here, it'll move from neutral. There won't be any lights lit up. Put it back in neutral, that neutral light will come on. If you put it in reverse, uh, that reverse light should come on. If those lights don't come on, especially if your neutral light doesn't come on, your four-wheeler isn't going to start. So keep that in mind. If you turn your key switch on, there's no neutral light. Say it's in reverse or it's in uh, forward. Your four-wheeler isn't going to start until you kick it into the neutral position or until you pull in your brake lever there. Uh, I believe it should start at that position. Uh, with your brake lever pulled in. If it if you feel like your shifter is in the neutral position and your light isn't coming on, what I would suggest doing is uh, adjusting that rod that I showed you down by your carburetor there. If that doesn't do it, then your neutral light might be bad or your neutral sensor might be bad. And that is gonna be and that is going to be down here where your shift arm goes into. So you've got two sensors down here. One of them will be neutral. One of them will be reverse. And sometimes you'll have those go bad. If those lights, again, aren't going on, then you may have a bad sensor down there. So that is the Yamaha Grizzly 350. This is a 2010 model. It's an automatic, two-wheel drive, oil-cooled little four-wheeler runs great these things are awesome machines we absolutely love them like i said one of the common problems is regulator rectifiers another common problem obviously is going to be the rear end and i'm going to show you that when i get into it you do want to make sure that you get uh, the maintenance done on these four-wheelers they hold about 2.2 quarts of oil so you want to make sure you're not running low on oil make sure and check that periodically also make sure you check out our service video on this yamaha grizzly 350 i'm going to show you how to be replacing spark plugs engine oil oil filter rear differential oil air filters and uh, just going through a complete service on these four wheelers. So you want to stick around for that. Make sure you click on the link below to find that video. If you guys have found this video helpful, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Please leave comments. Let us know what you're thinking and what else you want us to do videos on. Thank you guys so much for watching.